All right, welcome to this brand new lesson where we are going to take a look at uh, a really cool way, uh, and this is something that you can use in a variety of different contexts, you can control what is happening, uh, to animate type. And so if I refresh this, I'm gonna show you what we're gonna create by the end of this video. So this is just a very, very quick little sequence where this text is kind of coming in and it's doing something interesting for each one of them, uh, for each letter. It's, it's, it's skewing them. We're using stagger to create you know, a nice sequence-based animation. And like I said, we can also do this with just a simple word or even paragraphs of text. Uh, and you'll see going forward, maybe in the next lesson, how we'll do that as well. So we could do this all the vanilla JavaScript way in terms of like finding a DOM element uh, that has text in it and then using JavaScript to attach uh, and create its own HTML element for each letter. Or we could use a C a, an actual JavaScript package that's already been created for us. Um, and then we just integrate it, it's very lightweight. Um, that is called split type, all right? so. Uh, Greensock actually has a plugin called Split Text, but it's a part of their club membership option, so it's not free. But Split Type is free, and it does pretty much the same thing, uh, as far as I understand it. And so Split Type, I'm, I'm going to show you exactly how to use it and how to integrate it. We're going to use the CDN option as shown here, right there. So we'll just want to include that in our project. So if I go down, we'll see this is exactly where I have it. So we have Greensock Animation Platform right here being included. Our Lenis Smooth Scroll, don't necessarily need that, I'm just kind of including it in, in most projects now. And then we also have our split type. So here's our Smooth Scroll stuff, and we have no HTML outside of the scripts right here. And I'm just gonna write from scratch because it's very simple, just for this simple demo. So we're just gonna have a section. Inside of the section, we're gonna have H1, and here's our text. And AMP, so UI, UX, and front end. Okay. Now the main SAS file, um, I also have left pretty much empty. We're just giving a dark background, color white, font family, a darker grotesque as it's called. Uh, the section element right here, 100 viewport height, display grid, place content center. These two, in case you're unaware, that's just a very, it's like the most efficient way to center horizontally and vertically an element. And, and our element in this case is the H1. And then we're just gonna take our H1 and font size for rem units. Now, this visibility hidden thing, we'll get to that. Uh, that's because we're gonna going to use auto alpha in order to um, get these to essentially not have to deal with FOUC or flash of uh, unstyled content. So we're gonna save that. And at this point, if we look, I'm on port 5501, I'm watching it, uh, yep, right here. We see nothing because of visibility hidden. Uh, again, we take that off and we should see our type this time. There it is. So you might have a heading like this. Um, you, like I said, you might also have paragraphs of text uh, and you wanna animate them, but you wanna do it at the character level or the word level. I'll show you how to do both and we'll use split type for that. So let's go back, keep, keep a visibility hidden on. All right, so split type, uh, let's go ahead and start writing our actual JavaScript. So the first thing we wanna do after we imported split type, we're just gonna say const text equals new split type, and then we put in the selector, in our case, just the H1. Simple enough. Um, we're also going to specify a, a timeline, const timeline equals gsap.timeline. We have some defaults here uh, for ease, power four in out. All right. We're also going to set our H1 to auto alpha one, and again, this is just dealing with the uh, FOUC stuff, flash of unwanted con unstyled content, <laughs> unwanted auto alpha one. And yes, we have to wrap these in squiggly braces. There we go. Awesome. So now you'll see it this time. Even though we have visibility hidden, we see it because we have GSAP set auto alpha one. Okay, now we're also gonna do timeline from, and we're gonna say, you know, here's the cool part. Um, before we get to that part, I'm just going to console log. I, 
our text element that's defined right here. Just to show you what's inside, all right? Um, so if I zoom up, you're gonna see it has uh, a few different uh, methods that we could tie into, chars, or an array rather. Um, these are the individual characters that is found within this text over here. So the very first one, uh, you can see there's a bunch of stuff that it includes, but essentially it will have the actual letters uh, individually. So if we look at, this, at, uh, look at this, it literally will import or insert new DOM elements because this doesn't exist in our HTML, this div class line in this H1. We also have this other class is word. So it found three different words. It found the UI UX, it found the and, the ampersand, and then it had front end. So we can tie into and animate just the words through the class of word. And then we could also, and by the way, you could do it line at the line level as well. So there's three different ways to, to tie in here. Um, and then inside of each word, we have a, car, a char class for character. And then you can see the actual character itself. So visually speaking, nothing changes. However, the DOM structure changes significantly. And then in doing so, now that we have access to all these classes, like the character class or the word or the line, um, we can then use GreenSock Animation Platform to, to animate those even with a stagger, uh, which is the typical use case for this sort of thing. So what we wanna do now is we'll get rid of that text and we're going to specify timeline from, all right, because we already have our two values set and we're gonna have uh, text.char, so our characters. Now inside of here, we're gonna have Y of 40. Opacity is gonna be zero, so they're gonna come and fade from nowhere. Um, we're also gonna put in a skew X, which we haven't done yet in this course, but you can skew like a perspective uh, tilt within the context of GreenSock Animation Platform. Um, so that's gonna be 30. Stagger will be 0 0.03. So it's very, very minimal stagger uh, because it will take a long time if you like to, did point one, it would take a long time for each character to come in. So you want something around this value. And we'll have duration one. Let's save that and see what happens. Ah, oh, nice. So notice how nice and smooth that looks. If we were to increase this to like from point three or point zero three to point one, it just takes a long time I suppose that's okay if you want that sort of effect, but for me, 0.03 works a lot better. It's faster and it's smoother. Okay, and then of course we could just chain because we're using a timeline. Uh, we can make it go out again, you know. Um, for instance, if we hit enter here, we'll tab this in, we'll do a two. We'll have our text.chars and we'll say y negative 40 this time opacity will be zero, so it's gonna fade back out. Skew X this time, let's do like negative 10. Uh, duration, one, and stagger, again, 0 0.03. So now we have a sequence animation. If I refresh, just like that. So again, we could tie into uh, words. This one's not as impressive because it's just, it's 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 only doing it at the, the word level. It's not quite as obvious, but it's still something that, you know, stylistically you might prefer. Um, and then I think it, there's also lines, which I haven't experimented with myself. And in this case, if we had multiple lines of type, then it would work. And that's basically how you use split type and we're gonna be using it throughout different contexts in the rest of this course. Um, and in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to use split type again, except we're gonna have a more elaborate example, and it's gonna be based on a scroll trigger.